Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. All right, when we harvested the stevia leaves, took the leaves off the plant, and then we put them in a food dryer and dehydrated them, and then they were just crumbly leaves, and I just squished them between my fingers, like, or between my hands like that, into a big bowl, and then put them into a Ziploc bag like this. But, in doing that, we've got some fairly big chunks and the chunks don't really uh, release the stevisoids well enough so I bought myself a mortar and pestle so that we can uh, crunch them up even more into a finer, finer powder And that will release the sweetness of each little particle of leaf a whole bunch easier in this fine of a powder as opposed to this coarse of uh, flaked up leaves. Well, here's some of our favorite casserole made out of uh, some meat on top along with uh, the root vegetables that we've been harvesting, rutabagas, carrots, parsnips, and sweet potatoes. My daughter and my wife really like them. All right, 21st of October. Uh, strawberry plants are finally starting to change colors. As soon as they're brown, I'm going to be clearing out the two walk paths and uh, trimming back the other stuff that's in the middle between the main plants that are supposed to be growing. Uh, stuff inside the uh, greenhouse is growing pretty good. I just found three cabbage worms on the kale and I ate those. And uh, I got a daikon from over on Shell's property over there to bring to Ginny at church. Here's the top of it right there. And there's the big daikon. It's a big one, size of a baseball bat. So that'll keep her for a week or two. 22nd of October, I have inspected the garden. Inside the uh, hoop house, I found six cabbage worms. One on a rutabaga plant, some on the cabbage plant, some on the kale plant, and I ate all six of them. I also found one little white worm, similar to a cabbage worm, except smaller and white. I just picked that off and threw it away. Um, our lettuce is growing pretty good now. We're getting up tall. And uh, everything in there is growing pretty good. Except the kohlrabi is not doing very good. And I have transplanted some rutabagas into the kohlrabi patch just because kohlrabis have died out. Parsnips here are doing good. Carrots are still doing good. The rutabagas are getting brown. I think what I'm going to do for storing those this winter, instead of leaving them in the ground, I think I'm going to get a big bucket like this and put it in my garage and then put the rutabagas inside of there. The garage stays fairly cool but not frozen. And I'll keep it deep into the garage, so even if somebody leaves the door open, it won't it won't freeze. Plus, the mass of all those rutabagas together will 
will hold the uh, the temperature fairly well inside that bucket. And I think I'll cover the bucket with, uh, I don't know, a piece of plywood or something just to keep the light out of it. The peas, they got a little bit frost, grayness, whatever. And But this next week should have some good growing weather for that and we might get some flowers and some peas. And I'm hoping we do. Um, the fennel that I cut the main stalks down, they're still growing well. I don't know if they grow through the winter or not. I'll find out. But even if not, I'm going to leave a couple for seeds. And also the three mangles that I've got left, the giant beets. You can see three of them there, four of them. I'm going to leave at least two of those to go to seed in the spring. Strawberries. Another couple weeks I'll be able to get in there and trim all that stuff out and clean it out and make a couple rows that I can actually walk through there with. So, after the end of this next week, I may be closing the uh, hoop house up to keep the uh, cold weather out and be able to grow our crops through the cold weather. But it's doing real good. The asparagus patch over here, Chow has cut the asparagus off basically at ground level and then sprinkled some uh, mulch leaves, dead leaves from the uh, compost pile and then sprinkled some dirt on top of that. And so in spring, these are all going to be big enough that we're going to be able to eat the shoots and uh, make some really good asparagus next year. Blackberry plant. You can see that the uh, branches have bent down and then I've got rocks sitting on the ends of the branches. That is to get them to root out here where the rocks are. And then we'll be able to clip the branches before the rocks. They'll be able to come back up and those will actually bear fruit next year. I've got two more branches that I haven't pinned down. There's one here. There's another one back here. It actually is pinned down a little bit. And a little short one back in there that goes through the fence. I could take those three and uh, I could use those for clippings. I could clip them oh, about this long and put them into a, a barrel similar to the way I did for the uh, grapes and the stevia. And those will root. So when I get a hold of Shao and we get another barrel ready with some potting soil, we're going to clip those put them in there before it gets too cold and then put those into the greenhouse up at ACC. Blueberry plants, they've all turned red now. They look very pretty. Now I'm going to do some watering. And while we're at it, we'll check on stuff. The spinach that Shell planted is in nice neat rows and is doing well. My garlic's doing well. The rutabagas I'm going to be pulling up and storing into my garage. Let's see if the peas did anything yesterday. I don't see any flowers yet, but uh, they're trying to climb. These rutabagas out in the weather, I really need to cover them. Maybe I should transplant these three over there on the back row and then cover from there over somehow. I'm going to take some of this spinach home today. Kale looks like it's doing good. A couple of rutabagas there. That rutabaga there must be the one I pulled the uh, cabbage worm off yesterday. I'll check it again make sure. These cabbages in here are not doing well. Rutabagas, of course, are doing really well. And I even planted some into the kohlrabi patch, and they're doing well. 
these lettuce over here not so good and these over here is a little better I'll harvest some of them bring them to charity carrots are coming up okay strawberries doing real well inside Reach down in around them first and see how big they are yeah this is a good size one let's see if I can get it up yeah now that's a good parsnip a little bit split open and eaten by crickets or whatever there but oh this is gonna be a big one too Ugh. yeah all I'm gonna need is two when they're like that one of these buckets that I've been using all spring and summer and fall to catch water off the roof to use in the garden I'm going to empty and I'm going to use for a root cellar and uh, I'm going to dump the water out I'm going to bring over some cold sand put it in the bottom put my roots rutabagas and carrots and parsnips or whatever put them in there cover them up with wet sand and then put the cover on top and uh, it's going to be similar to Xiao's root cellar he's got in the ground and we'll see how it works all right we're at the garden a couple days before the next frost hard frost is going to be coming i'm going to harvest all the rutabagas a couple more kohlrabi and then i'm going to close up the greenhouse i'd like to put some some uh plastic over over the uh peas but I'm just gonna knock off part of the uh, the dirt on these rutabagas because I'm gonna be burying them in sand anyway I want to go over and show you the the uh, root cellar that Shao just made. Boy, this bucket is heavy. Lots of rutabagas in it. All right, we've got the rutabagas up. We'll take a bunch of these right now over to the uh, compost pile come back and get the rest of them later those are edible but they're a little bit brown right now all right Shao made a nice little root cellar outside his house right under this green carpet right here you just take the green carpet roll it back open up the cover pull out a bag of foam and then down in here he's got daikons on this end and rutabagas on the other side over here we've got another bag of foam and there's um, a rutabaga and some more daikon I want to keep these covered with fairly wet sand these guys rutabagas down in here big ones big huge rutabagas right down in there and I'm gonna be doing something similar to this in my 
trash can in my garage. Except I won't need the insulation like he's got in these bags. So, nice little root cellar. Right up against the building, under the eaves. And uh, that will keep those root vegetables. He's already got most of his daikons up. He's got a few more over there. And this new patch he's got over here still growing, so they will uh, be okay. All right, I'd like to put a piece of plastic over these peas, but I don't know if I'm going to get to that today. These are my rutabagas that I've already put put uh, plastic over. They're they're nicely secure. I'm going to go ahead and unlock both sides of my uh, It's on the outside, not growing very big compared to the ones inside. All right, those are lining up good. Man. That's good. Now, roll this down. And when I get it down, I'll put the snaps on it. Oh, I want to put some hay down here on this dirt first before I get it down there. So I'm going to take a break and go get my hay. Okay, I've got some straw that I had bought way back this spring. And I wanted to lay this down so that it doesn't stick to the dirt when I put the, uh, the plastic down. There. Now I can roll that down. my snaps down starting right here snap one snap two three this one I think I'm gonna go the other side with That looks good. Over here, I may put some down across the bottom as well. But before we close it up, I want to view the spinach 
the yellow heart greens, the kale, the rutabaga down here, the cabbages and rutabagas mixed, the rutabagas alone on this row, rutabagas and kohlrabi on this row, lettuce across there, of course uh, strawberries in there, and carrots in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and close this side up. Pulled up a bunch of rutabagas. I mean, yeah, rutabagas. Now these last couple kohlrabi that are getting way too big. This one and this one. I'm gonna pull the last three. I'm gonna leave for seeds. I mean, two kohlrabi along with the rutabagas we're going to put in the root cellar that we're going to make along with all these rutabagas in here so I've got some moist sand that I'm going to bring over to the house and uh, into that trash can that I was using to catch water off the roof. Here I'll show you the, the hay we've got just to seal up any gap and keep the uh, plastic from sticking to the to the dirt. We've got hay across the bottom on both sides but not on the ends. The ends, I may put some hay in there as well. But while we're here, see what it looks like from the inside. That hay is pushed in quite a bit, but it's not overlapping the, the plant, so we're fine. So in here, it already seems to be warmer in here, just from closing it up. 50 degrees now. All right. I'm going to close up, get some more sand and go home. On the peas, I've got the trestle all untied and I'm going to pull out all the wood, touches each other, and then we'll cover it with that plastic over there. Got just enough plastic to do it. So, I'm going to take this end kind of go like that maybe tie it together a little bit take one of my little ties here I'll just put one little knot right here there and I know this is long enough to go over so I'm just gonna toss it over Spread it out. It's not completely closed in, but at least it'll protect it from some of the cold. If I had a little bit more plastic, I could cover the ends as well. All right, we are in my garage, which is not heated. However, it does have heat on the other side of that wall, heat on the other side of that wall, and heat upstairs, and cold there and there. Um, I'm going to take some sand here out of the uh, container, 
put it into the barrel that I cleaned out earlier. One that I used to catch water off the roof with. All right, I've got about, I don't know, five, six inches on the bottom. And I'm gonna put three big rutabagas down big there. One. Here's a big one. I'm just gonna set them right down in there. Sand all the way around them. Having them kinda lean up against the side a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put some sand. On top of them, I'll work my way from the big ones up to the small ones. All right, I'm going to throw some more sand in. Lean them up against the side as well. Laid like that, I put a little bit more sand. Now I didn't bring any uh, parsnips or carrots. They can stay in the ground for a while more. Frost won't hurt them any until it gets really cold. The kohlrabi, we will just lay in there like that and like that and I'll cover it with sand that's all the sand I really need just enough to cover it up I might just put a little bit more since I've got it here but I don't need a lot more and when it comes time to dig them out I'm gonna want something to put the sand in. Put my cover on and there's our root cellar. I think it's about time I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says the penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust and his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted and my life has been changed as the Bible tells us it would. Eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.